Welcome to the Beer Den Podcast. Tonight we'll be drinking Abita Brewing Company's Amber Lager. everybody welcome back to the beer den podcast my name is ethan hoopy and i'm michael laroe tonight we'll be drinking an amber lager by abita brewing company they were founded in 1986 down in new orleans they're now producing more than 151,000 barrels a year with no preservatives additives or stabilizers their lager is cold filtered which is actually pretty cool because it allows The protein molecules to clump together, which makes it easier to filter them out. That sounds exciting. Yeah, it's a little different. Yeah. Um, Fun fact about them, too, they also brew root beer, which I would be really interested in trying. Yeah, we should try that sometime. So let's get right into tasting this amber lager. For sure. Definitely the first thing that I notice of uh, of this beer, uh, it's like the first thing I wrote down, too, is that it is smooth as fuck. (laughs) <laughs> very smooth it is super smooth, smooth like yeah, I, just, I find it super balanced mm-hmm. it has a really good flavor i mean you you can smell the caramel in it you can kind yep. of taste the caramel nice toasted malts too yeah it. i get i get a lot of those malts because we um we've brewed a few batches of beer and like that was one of the things i noticed is that it really smells like the wort when we were from when we brew Mm -hmm. so it's pretty hazy actually like i was gonna say it was a slight haze but it's pretty it's pretty hazy uh nice copper color to it yeah um smell wise it kind of reminds me of like pecan pie like okay yeah on thanksgiving yeah for sure it definitely has like that toasted toasted kind of nutty almost yeah yeah there you go baked scent to it and you can really like that caramel molasses flavor to it yeah that's it's really strong it it really uh, it's a characteristic of like these kind of more malty beers Mm -hmm. um yeah yeah, i i really enjoy it uh not very dry it's pretty mouth coating when you drink it as well yeah do you think that the uh flavor kind of lingers too long or i kind of felt like it had a very even uh, profile all the way through mm-hmm. and then it kind of like uh, dips off at the end if that kind of makes sense like it doesn't linger in your mouth too long um i, I think it, it i think it personally i think it stays there uh, okay like, it it doesn't overstay like it's not a really strong aftertaste yeah but you get just a nice like reminder that makes you want to come back and take another swig of it. Like you want to keep drinking it. I don't think it stays nearly as long as like most IPAs where like an IPA, you take a sip of an IPA and sometimes it's like, you can tell that you drank an IPA an hour later. At least that's what it feels like with this. I feel like it, it, it's so smooth that like it just kind of, it just eases in and then like it starts to just ease out. Like, the, the flavor isn't overwhelming or anything. It's, you know, it allows for other things to kind of live amongst it, I guess. Maybe that's just the hop shock of an IPA. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it kind of is. So we base everything on three categories. Quality out of 50 points, which is pretty much what we just went over. Next is value using $10 as kind of a baseline. Um, and that's out of 25 points. It takes into account quality. So if it scores higher on quality and it has a good price, it's going to score a little bit higher in value. And then finally, we have design, which is the bottler can design, uh, the colors of it, labels, information that's on the label, and all that fun stuff that goes into that. Uh, I've put quality at a 43. I thought it was a really good flavor. It was balanced. Yeah. No, actually, I read it the exact same. Um, a 43. I, I think that it's so smooth all the way through. It's a very consistent flavor. 
kind of going back, we've tried other beers that has like a really big burst up front Mm -hmm. and then either dissipates or then that just kind of like that really big flavor just lingers kind of like what I was saying with like IPAs. I feel like it's a big flavor and then it just never goes away. Mm -hmm. This I think is so smooth. It eases in, eases out and like, it just has, it has uh, just, a really good malt flavor. Yeah. Uh, value wise, this came in at ten ninety nine for a six pack. Uh, so that really actually boosts its value score with what we gave it for quality. I ended up giving it a nineteen on value. Yeah, I was right around the exact same area with you uh, again. Um, I ended up giving it a twenty. The quality of it ended up kind of boosting that for me. Uh, it kind of justified the very average price, but with the exceptional flavor, I thought they really deserved the the extra points. Okay, that seems fair. What did you give it for design? Um, as far as design, um, I ended up giving it an eighteen. Um, I thought that it touched on a lot of the points that I know that we both look for. Um, looking at it, it's a, uh, it's sort of an orange, yellow, brown, uh, label, which I thought kind of, it worked really well with like the multi flavors and stuff. It kind of reminds you of that. It's very grainy kind of color scheme. The image on it is of a band. Uh, it looks like they're like kind of performing in the streets and stuff. Which I believe is very representative of them being out of New Orleans and uh, all the like jazz bands and stuff like that that play down there and how that's very popular. Yeah, well, ultimately, I think that it's a very uh, clean design and I don't know, it just looks really good. It allows it to pop without being like too crazy and stuff. Okay. I, I like the color scheme of it. I docked it a couple points because the Best Buy date isn't very... Like, at first, I didn't even think it was on there. Yeah. It's very light. Like, easily could just not even see it. I also docked it because the name wasn't very creative. I think they could have came up with something. Granted, this beer itself is the first beer that they actually, as a company, started selling. Oh, really? So, I could see where they were, like, trying to be kind of general with the name to represent kind of what it was. Yeah. But I, especially with craft beer, I like to see a little bit more fun put into it. A little, a little bit more. Pizzazz. Yeah, there you go. Um, But it does have the alcohol content. It is 4.5%. It has a top label, bottom label. I like that it's in like the little shorter bottle yeah, itself. Yeah, yeah. It's they, a bit more unique. They actually recycle a lot of their glass. So um, okay. a lot of these bottles are like just constantly recycled. Oh, that's that's cool. why that's why they go with the smaller design. Um, so overall, my score was a thirteen in design. Uh, so for me, that gives it a seventy-five. Ethan, your score was an eighty-one. So averaging that out, that gives us a seventy-eight for the Abita Amber Lager. Hey everybody! Thank you for listening to another Beer Den review. Don't forget to follow us on social media. Links down in the description. Subscribe, like, and share. And if there are any beers you would like us to try out, leave them in the comments below. We'll see you on the next episode of the Beer Den Podcast.